This is Nick with Firewalls.com, and today I'm going to be talking about how to configure the SSL VPN remote access functionality on a SonicWall firewall. So this is a pretty straightforward setup. Um, we're going to keep things relatively basic here um, and just go ahead and use a local user. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure that we've got the users that are going to need that remote access added in. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and create an account for myself here. And I'll leave the email address blank. I don't need that for right now. Um, this is the important part on creating a new user, is making sure that they have access to the SSL VPN services user group. So we want to put our users in there and then decide what access they have here. Now you can get pretty granular with this. You can create an address object for just giving them access to one singular location. Um, I'm going to give full access to the X0 subnet here. Perfect, so we've got our user set up. We're going to go ahead and start configuring our SSL VPN. Okay, now that we're in our SSL VPN server settings, we're going to want to review our SSL VPN server settings and make sure that these are um, to our liking. So I am going to go ahead and use the default port, but you can use pretty much any port that you want as long as it's not already being used somewhere else because that would obviously cause conflicts. Also with the user domain, the default here is just going to be local domain. Um, but you can change that also to anything you want. It won't actually put it as part of your domain unless um, you have a few other things configured like uh, Active Directory integration, which we're not going to get into today. Uh, but you can set this to whatever you want. could make it easier on your users when they're getting connected using the NetExtender client. So um, once we've reviewed these settings and we have made sure that they are to our liking, we'll go ahead and turn it on on the WAN zone. And you do that just by clicking WAN right there. And now we see we have a green light next to our WAN zone, which means the SSL VPN is enabled on that zone. So that means anybody coming from the WAN that obviously has credentials and the necessary settings can get connected to the SSL VPN from there. So now we'll go ahead and configure our client settings. And now go ahead and click configure here. Perfect. So the first thing in here that we're going to want to do is make sure that our zone is SSL VPN and then that we create a network address for the SSL VPN um, to hand out via DHCP. So you can just create that and make it on a separate network or make it um, a range that's outside of your standard DHCP uh, lease range but still on the same subnet, um, however you'd like to do that. If you do make it on a different subnet, it will still be able to communicate with your X0 subnet or whatever subnet you're trying to um, have the SSL VPN communicate with as long as you have the proper access rules. So I already have this configured here under the SSL VPN net. So we'll just keep that the same. Also, we're going to want to go into our client routes. So something important to note on this is that this will give anybody, any user with the SSL VPN services access to whatever um, you put in here. So even though I already added the X0 subnet on that user, I'm going to go ahead and add it in here because every user that I create for this SSL VPN will have access to the X0 subnet. So I do have a little redundancy here going on, but it will inherit the settings from both the client routes and uh, the individual user rights. And then I'm also going to just give it the default DNS settings I have on this device, which is just Google's DNS. There are a few more options here, but for basic functionality here, we have everything we need. I also recommend keeping this to allow saving of username only, as allow saving of username and password might be convenient for the user, but definitely poses a security risk um, to potentially unauthorized access and it'll reset uh, all active connections here. That's fine, we'll continue. 
So the last thing that we need to make sure is just that the proper access rules are in place so that our user here can, in this scenario we'll say, can ping and RDP into uh, his machine. Okay, so now that we're in our access rules, we want to make sure that we have the right zones. So our user is going to be coming from the SSL VPN going to the LAN. And it looks like we have our auto-generated SSL VPN to LAN rule using our SSL VPN network with our X0 subnet using any service. That'll do. We want it to emulate this user being on the LAN so we don't need to restrict any service. However, that is an option that you have. Now one last note on when configuring the SSL VPN. On a user's machine, if they are running Windows 10 and you happen to be running into issues with the client, I recommend ensuring that you are using version 8.6.265. This can be downloaded from any free MySonic Wall account and it tends to function a little bit more smoothly on Windows 10 than um, the newer versions in 9.0 as well as the versions that are downloaded from the uh, client portal. But if those work for you, then more power to you. Just 8.6.265 if you're having issues with the client. But for the time being, that is how you set up a basic SSL VPN remote access functionality on the SonicWall firewall. As always, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.